Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be diving down into the charts to take a look at what has been going on most recently with BTC. We've seen a bit of a pullback, we've seen you know Russia, Ukraine, all that kind of stuff go on in the market and we're going to dive down and take a look at the technical analysis for Bitcoin and to kind of give you an idea as to what I think is most probably going to happen next here with Bitcoin. Now, as I get into this video, if you do find it useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you are going to be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all that said, done and out of the way, let's jump on down into the desktop and take a look at what is going on here with BTC. Okay, guys, we're going to start things off with our hourly chart. Now, there's a lot of information going on on here, um, and I do want to kind of uh, clean this up a little bit, right, because we are quite messy, and I want to kind of really make this really crystal clear um, for how I get to the end result, okay, so that we can have confidence in everything that we're doing, right? So um, obviously on the larger time frames, we do have um, some different moves, uh, and I think a lot of those are... Uh, quite apparent so I'm just going to jump up into our daily view and I'm just going to shoot on down here uh, so we have a big um, kind of corrective pattern that could potentially play out this takes us down towards that $25,000 the only way to invalidate that move obviously is to go up into new all-time highs okay so that's the biggest macro scale it's basically an expanding flat correction um, and I'm not really going to talk too much about it but it is there um, and we should acknowledge that it is there until proven otherwise, right? Um, so as I come back down, we also have this ABC move. This is the C wave low. Um, that actually takes us down to a light to light ratio with our double, uh, potentially a double bottom. And I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail uh, soon. But basically, this ABC correction is nearing its completion. So as I come back down into our hourly view and I expand this up, um, we obviously have this uh, C wave low target down here um, at 32,800. Um, and again, the actual low point for invalidation, if I mark it up just down here, um, it comes in at uh, pretty much that exact point, actually. Let's uh, just check this. The low of 32,917. Okay, so we're right in there for a double bottom, and that is our C wave low target. Okay, um, so I'm going to actually just change that line into a different color so that we know what that one is. And I'm probably going to go with a nice pink color. Uh, that'll do. Cool. Right, um, so the other thing that's on here, other than the fact that there is a low target there, is we are tracking five impulsive moves to the downside, okay? Uh, we have wave one here, wave two, wave three, um, taking us down to those recent lows, this being effectively $36,500, um, and now we're tracking up for a fourth wave higher. Now, depending on how high this fourth wave goes, will determine how low um our fifth wave will go down okay so in order to get down to this low target down here which would be a very neat example by the way for um the, the technical analysis if we do retrace all the way down to you know thirty two thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars that is an incredibly neat double bottom for a big bull signal to the upside okay and and one of the things that we were talking about really early on during this kind of fomo phase uh, was this pattern right this pattern of Market pushes up, traded sideways, pushed up, traded sideways, pushed up, traded sideways, fell down, traded sideways, fell down, could trade sideways, could fall down. This pattern is something that the market makers love to do. It's a, it has a bit of history to it. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Um, but if you were to search it, you'll find you know exactly what's going on there um, you know, with that particular pattern. This is something uh, that was going on on the way up. And why I was saying uh, we were not FOMOing in, we were waiting for the correction, and because there was a high probability that the same pattern was going to appear on the way down, uh, like we have seen so far. Okay, so we went impulsive up and we're going impulsive down. Okay, so it's just kind of rinsing the market, retail investors getting wrecked, and all the usual stuff um, that the whales like to do. Okay, so these impulsive moves down, right? What is so important about these? Well, um, the impulsive move in itself is, you know, an interesting play. And we'll get into this last little leg in a moment. Um, inside each of these, we would expect to find five waves at the top. We'd expect to see three waves in the, uh, this wave two. We'd expect to find five waves to the downside here. And we'd expect to see three waves up here. And then we'd expect an additional five waves down lower. Okay, this is basically a five, three, five, three, five wave count. Um, and it is basically your impulsive move broken down a little bit lower. Okay, so this impulsive move is on our hourly time frame. Right, but it's also very visible on our daily. Um, if you shoot on oh, up into here, if I get rid of that for a sec and uh, bring this over, um, we can see here one, two, three. We're waiting for the fourth, and then we go down lower. Okay. Um, so on our daily time frame, 
we have wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four to come, wave five lower. Okay, um, pretty standard stuff, and it's really visible on our daily time frame in the same way that it was here with one, two, three, four, and five higher. Okay, and I'll mark that up if you didn't see it, but it's basically, if I grab that up correctly, uh, wave one, wave two, wave three, uh, approximately here, wave four, do, and five higher. Okay, um, and in fact, we might actually articulate that one there to make a little bit more sense to it. Okay, um, so we have five waves up, we have five waves down on the larger time frame. And I've marked that up in our hourly chart so it's overlaid and we can see how that's tracking, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. Right. Now, inside here on our hourly chart, we look for five waves or three waves or five waves, right? So um, inside here, what do we have? Well, we have only three waves down in this first little leg, right? So we basically know that we're already on that kind of micro scale where we can no longer count waves inside waves, okay? So we do have that ABC move to the downside there. We also have an ABC move to the upside. Um, we could also go lower and count micro movements in there if we wanted to, um, but effectively this here is an overextended C wave. Um, and you know, if you wanted to, you could probably say that that's a fourth wave and a fifth wave higher. Um, but for the most part, it's just an overextended C wave on the hourly chart. Okay, so we have uh, a three waves down here. We have three waves up over here. Um, but then we get into this impulsive move down. Now we do have five waves. Um, so this wave three does actually align with Elliott theory with wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five actually is an overextension coming and taking us down into this low point down here. Okay, why is this important? Well, this is important because again, we can break this down a little bit further. We only have the ABC move in wave one and in wave two, but inside wave uh, three here, we have one, two, three, four, five. And inside wave five, we also have, as an ABC by the way in wave four, um, but in wave five, we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and um, so we are ticking off all of the boxes here, except for the, ex you know, the, uh, the big exception is wave one that hasn't got these five waves. Um, so, you know, that's kind of lucky, I guess, more than anything else. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And what I mean by lucky is that the fact that if we had five waves inside that wave one, we'd be deeper uh, in the correction than we are. Okay, I'm going to also just remove some of these corrective moves up here. Um, because it is just noise on the chart. So we do have five waves coming down and that takes us down to our current position. Okay, so we've completed that fifth wave low. And I called this out in our Discord server with Patreon members, they know this, $36,500 was called. And then we're looking to track up. Okay, and this is not so clear just yet, but we are looking for a correction first. And we are looking for a corrective move up. Okay, this should be A, B, C. Um, and, you know, I was calling out about $40,000, but we have invalidation points that we should consider. Um, so we cannot actually cross higher than $39,500. Um, and therefore, I think we're actually going to find this uh, bit of resistance right up here a little bit, uh, probably around $38,000. That's then probably where I think this is likely to go. Um, so there should be an ABC right inside here somewhere. Um, and this will basically allow us then to start to see the fifth wave come down lower. Okay. And um, so right now we are looking considering the stochastic RSI, small pullback into a wave B, not going down lower than the uh, third wave low at this point. Um, this should probably be higher than $37,000, uh, or 30, sorry, it should be higher than $36,350 exactly, according to Binance. Uh, you gotta love all those pennies that they love to kind of hit. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we should be higher than this. Um, so we'll look for that retracement and then we go up into a, a C wave higher. And then that basically is fourth wave complete. And then what we're doing here is we're looking for five waves, uh, which will start off as an AB overextended C wave that was impulsive. And then that takes us down uh, into our lower range. Now, depending on how high wave four goes, will depend on how low wave five goes. Okay. Now, back into the bigger picture, we had that C wave low target. Now, in order to get this fifth wave all the way down here to this C wave target, it would actually require this fourth wave to go quite high and for an overextension on this C wave, right? So we already know that we cannot push higher than 39,450 or whatever that is, uh, 450, yeah. Um, so we will look to find this around 38 and a half K approximately. Um, and if we were to draw a Fibonacci retracement tool on here through to that theoretical high, you can see that this would actually line up with a 2.618 move um, on the bigger scale. So this would eventually effectively be, you know, a wave one, wave two, 
wave three, wave four, wave five, completing that down there. Once all that aligns up, that gives you a double bottom. So whether or not you're into Elliott theory or not, uh, that will be your bull flag. And this will actually allow for a deeper correction to have occurred. It will also allow for um, completeness of the chart across multiple time frames, And it would basically mean that we can start to see an impulsive move to the upside. And um, so this is kind of what we're looking for. This is the kind of level of retracement that I think is possible. Um, there's no guarantee that we go that low, um, but uh, you know, that's kind of the most probable outcome that I do have here for Bitcoin now, given the fact that you know Russia's done what Russia has, um, and effectively, you know, we've seen some fear enter into the market. We should expect turbulence, and we should expect multiple waves, um, kind of in multiple different directions here. Three waves down, two waves up um, after this ABC move. Um, and this actually takes us down into a pretty neat buy zone. And I do anticipate, because I'm going to move this one now, because that was my original low. Um, I'm going to move this down into this range here. And I would say that basically it's anywhere inside, um, yeah, pretty much lower than 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 this point is going to be optimized value. So if we go lower than 34,000, um, there's going to be opportunity right inside here. Um, I do believe. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is the most probable at this point in time. Um, and as I come up into the larger time frames, it's also kind of worth acknowledging, you know, is that flat correction something that is possible? Are we likely to see an overextension on this C wave? What would happen uh, to allow that to actually you know, be allowed? Um, so if we grab hold of um, our Fibonacci retracement tools here, uh, actually, I have to measure it from the top here, don't I? So if I grab this and I move it down to here um, and I go ahead and transpose that over, um, yeah, we have the the like to like ratio actually taking it down a little bit deeper there. So I might have missed a little bit there. So we'll check that. Um, you know, we would have to drop down to below 20. Yeah, 20. Uh, I want to call it if we if we drop down to 26, that's going to be uh, difficult to deal with. Um, and if we deal with uh, if we drop down lower than 23.3, then that basically would mean that we are retracing to a point where I'm I'm comfortable saying bear market, right? So that's kind of what we're avoiding. Um, in the expanding flat correction, uh, we could probably drop down a little bit lower. So let me actually just do the math on that quickly. So if I um, grab hold of this move. Let me see where we've gone up to so far. Um, okay, so effectively we have just gone a few percentage points higher here. Um, okay, so then before we would actually just drop a little bit lower. That would actually be a pretty decent uh, level. I don't think that would actually be too damaging at all. Um, so that would probably take us down to about 26 and a half. Yeah, about 26 and a half is probably about right for that um, that move. So going down lower than, than 26K is going to be difficult to deal with, as I said, right? So we don't want to do that, ideally. And um, this is possible until proven otherwise, as I said at the beginning of the video. Um, I still think the, the most probable area of support is going to be this double bottom that occurs with the ABC. If the ABC um, it gets the extended C, we absolutely have to hold 26 and a half K without that. Um, we are dropping down significantly. Now, what does that mean for bear market scenarios um, and all that kind of good stuff? So first of all, I want to talk about what's actually happened so far. Um, so, so far, we've seen a retracement of 52%. Okay, so uh, effectively, that would be the double bottom as well. If we drop down there, that's still 52%. That is from all time high down to that low. Okay, so that's okay. That's not bear market scenario. Um, it's bearish, absolutely. And we look at this uh, this area here from May. Uh, through to the lows over here. This was a 55% move. Again, not a problem um, to deal with. Okay. Now, if I um, actually bring up uh, this data from Bitstamp, and maybe I'll talk about that in a moment as well. Um, we have, you know, some ex in some interesting kind of moves here. Let me bring this up into a weekly view for a sec uh, and bring that down. There we go. Okay, cool. So um, for bear market uh, in 2018, 2019, uh, yeah, 2017, 2018, um, this was actually a 69% drop, okay? So we lost a lot of value very quickly, 69%, okay? Um, so 70% is kind of my threshold for this, and I'll go through why I think that is in a moment. Um, and over here, we also have a 67% uh, drop, okay? So just short of that 70% move. Um, now, that's important because there are some key areas that a lot of people talk about, right? And areas that we haven't retested on and all that kind of stuff. $20,000 is one of them. Now, if we were to retrace from all-time high down to $20,000, 
it takes us higher than 71 cent that will me that to me is is bear market okay and um, obviously from there we drop down lower because bitcoin will lose 85 percent of its value in a bear market okay so um, we would be looking at a $10,000 Bitcoin. Now, never in the history of Bitcoin has BTC ever dropped down uh, during a bull run into a bear market lower than the previous all-time high. So in this case, um, you know, or 2017, you know, bear market was higher than the high of the 2013 bull run. So in 2020, 2021, 2021 and 2022, this bull cycle, um, effectively, you know, it's never been done in the past. We've never had in history of Bitcoin. We've never dropped down lower than the previous high. So dropping down to $20,000, it doesn't seem probable based on the history of Bitcoin. However, um, finance systems and, and markets in general, they don't like gaps, right? And we've left a big gap down here. We have not retested this area. And therefore, there's a lot of speculation that we have to come down and we have to test this area. But testing this area would effectively create a market that is you know, a crypto winter, it could potentially last for a very long time. So the likelihood or the probability of this is incredibly low, considering the stochastic RSI and the price momentums across all of the time frames are actually indicating that we need to move up. Okay, so therefore, I think it's very, very unlikely to occur. It's possible, but unlikely. And um, so let's talk about this um, for a moment as well, because this is a parallel channel um, based on um, the May high the June low and the all time high of $69,000. And this particular area was the low of 32,900, I think it was 32,000 and yeah, 32,950, right? So um, basically we could test this trend uh, or parallel channel um, and effectively that actually would take us down to about $31,000 uh, in and around that area. Again, that actually keeps us uh, in line with a one-to-one -one ratio with that ABC move that I spoke about. And we know this is not impulsive, by the way, guys, because if we were to draw this up, um, let me actually draw that correctly for starters. Um, if we were to actually draw this up as, you know, a potentially an impulsive move, um, this is the fourth wave here, maybe, um, coming down lower. Uh, this would have to be the wave one. This would be wave two. We actually have overlap here. Um, so it doesn't actually work. So instead, what we end up with is uh, effectively a, a double flat, a, a double flat correction, of, oh, not a flat correction, a double cor uh, corrective move. Uh, basically, think of it as an ABC next to an ABC um, or an XY, um, yeah, WXY, for example, at the end. Ultimately, that actually takes you down into a point where you could see this parallel channel playing out. And again, this actually would just drop us down. Uh, potentially towards around that 55%, something that we had seen previously as well. And um, so I think there's a lot of um, merit in that. So we'll keep an eye on that and see if this uh, this actual parallel channel holds up or not. Um, but it is interesting one to keep an eye on. Um, but for the most part, right now, everything is lining up to kind of see uh, the potential lows. If I come back up into our hourly chart and uh, bring this down to here, and it's basically 32,900 and create the double bottom and and then obviously from there ride it up and i think that's going to be the end of the correction um but again some of these moves could overextend ever so slightly um you know it is possible to join down in as i said test that parallel channel a little bit lower um, but i do think from a, a neatness of a technical analysis perspective this double bottom is going to be incredibly powerful so one to watch out for and um, guys i'm going to leave the video there if you have found it useful um, and informative hit the like button i really do appreciate that if you happen to be new to the channel then do go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you are going to be kept up to date with everything that we do here at cheeky crypto with all that said done and out of the way i hope everyone has a fantastic day and i'll catch you all in the next one